Welcome back to the podcast. Okay, let's talk about it. And on this particular podcast, we seek to address topics and subjects that we can't always address at a church setting on a Sunday morning. And so my name is Alan, and with us today we have a special guest. This is Chris Floyd, who is the next-gen pastor of Cottage Hill and all of the campuses of Cottage Hill, and also my oldest son. So welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to have a great time. And the reason I wanted you here for this particular podcast is uh, we have had a number of people send to us a question or would like for us to address their child mm -hmm. and technology, right. their, child, their child and technology. Because of your position and your years of experience in ministering to families and seeking to reach and disciple the next generation, I felt like you're probably... Uh, better to help address this than, than me. I still have a flip phone. I'm just kidding. But um, so here, here's my first question. Is it a thing? Is it, is it, is it really, is it an issue? Yeah. So technology, pornography along with it is really amongst Gen Z, amongst teenagers, college students, middle schoolers. It's not a issue. It is the issue. Oh, wow. And so you think of some, some, there's crazy stats in that ages 13 to 24 actually think that not recycling is worse than pornography. Mm. And in 2015, one out of every four students and four teenagers would describe themselves as constantly on technology, almost constantly on the internet and searching. That has almost more than doubled in 2022 with over, over 50%. And so it is just amazing to think that it is the issue, but teenagers, Generation Z, do not see it as an issue. But then at the same time, the sociologists are telling us it's the loneliest generation. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing post-COVID the depression, self-image, mm -hmm. lack of social skills, even though they're constantly on social media. Yep. So there are some ramifications. It, it, you know, certainly we don't want to diminish the the role and the effect of pornography, uh, but just the technology in general and, and the screen time, let's call it screen time, the adverse that it affects has on their personality and on their um, their mindset and even their relationship with others, right? Yeah. And adolescents, I mean, they, they would describe and say they're more concerned of a social death than a physical death. Oh, wow. And so, so they may not even acknowledge it as an issue, but it weighs on them mm. as they are so attached. We are so attached. You know, I was talking with a friend of mine recently talking about screen time. And, uh, you know, once a week I get that little alert that says, hey, this past <laughs> week. Yeah. You know, and I don't know if Apple or whoever is sending that it, or if they're encouraging me that, that I should do more or if they're using it as the Holy Spirit sending it as a conviction. Hey, you spent five hours last week on your phone. Yeah. And, uh, and I'll just confess that my buddy and I were talking about this, that in some ways I was like, well, you know, I, you know, I, I, I do a lot of my work mm -hmm. via the phone. So, you know, I would kind of ease my, my, my conscience, you know, my conviction a bit. Well, you know, I was doing a lot. I was shooting a lot of emails, a lot of that. But the truth of the matter is that's still time Absolutely. that I'm staring at that screen. And we know that with our children, it's much, much more than that. Let me ask this question. We, we've determined that this is an issue. Right. Mm -hmm. It is an issue that needs to be addressed. There's a lot of adverse things, negative things. If a Christian mom, Christian dad, they want to raise Christian children. Uh, clearly, this is a this is a thing. What about gaming? Yeah. You know, uh, as I shared in a recent sermon, I kind of skipped a little bit of that generation. You and your brother are somewhat gamers, but nowhere near like what I see today. Yeah. I'll have parents come in, and that's how they have to discipline their child is, is the, the threat of removing some their gaming platforms. Um, tell talk talk about gaming. Is is that a thing, or is am I? Yeah, no, it's it's a it's a thing. I remember. When, when we were at Atlanta and you brought home the very first PlayStation one <laughs> and, and we had the little, the little, the little controllers, a drive right. and stuff, yep. need for speed. Yeah. But it, it has gone so much to, to a whole nother level. And, and I'd say there's good in gaming. I think, yep. think the attitude that, that some can have that it is negative and you shouldn't do it. And, and 
we'll talk more about that later on, but, but it's not all, all, all horrible. And so I, I would say as parents and as we, we navigate this and if there were a little bit ahead, even go ahead and thinking through with Maverick and parents within Cottage Hill and our campuses, I, I'd say three things to think through uh, with gaming before you allow it. it is the first thing is priority one or two is that how, how's their academics? Mm-hmm. How's school? How are their mm-hmm. grades? Not that it has to be perfect, mm-hmm. but th- that should be a checklist before they're spending that's hours. A pro- that's a priority. That's a priority. The second that I would say is their relationship with the Lord. Yeah. Is, is are they active within their church? Do you catch them in their room reading their Bible every now and then? Not that mm-hmm. they have to be perfect seven for seven in the week mm-hmm. with their quiet time, mm-hmm. but, but do you see fruit in their life? Mm-hmm. How are their grades? Do you, do you see fruit? And then do they have friends? Mm-hmm. Apart from online with a headset, do they have other brothers and sisters in Christ that they can go to, they can talk to? So if, if their grades are good, if, if yeah. they're all right with school, yeah. and you see fruit in their life and their walk with the Lord, and, and you know they have real friends, mm-hmm. then, man, that's no problem. Hey, play and hanging out with them, because there is a social piece with it as they talk and play. Right. But those are three things that should be non-negotiables before they're spending hours in a weekend on a Saturday playing video games. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I remember uh, when the whole headsets and that whole interaction, I remember going up to our man cave and you and your brother were playing and talking, who are y'all talking to? And then, of course, <laughs> even talking to some of our friends back in Florida and the newer people. And it, it was also, it was entertainment for me just to listen in, you know, yeah. some of the trash talking and gaming and those <laughs> kinds of things. I think that if we do put the priority on our child and their relationship with the Lord, yeah. If they if we if they're walking with the Lord, spending time with the Lord, they're Christians. Mm-hmm. Then there's the conviction of the Holy Spirit, Absolutely. right? So so I can do a certain amount of parenting, mm-hmm. guiding, but there's also the be the conviction of the Holy Spirit. So as I'm praying for my son, I'm praying for my daughter. Lord, would you convict them of maybe this too much gaming? Has it become an idol in their life? Yeah. Because it can be. You know, for young people, very easily. They can, they can grab hold of things that can become an idol in their life. Not to say that we, we, we don't as adults, but certainly do, but maybe more susceptible as, as kids. Here's the other thing that's so fascinating to me. You and I have talked about this with regard to gaming, is I had a young man in my office who is a, uh, he's a, he's a trader. He's, I mean, college educated, has a, I mean, a very successful career young man. And, um, I said, "Hey, tell me about your hobbies. What do you? What do you? You know, you a golfer? What do you do?" And uh, he goes, he kind of, kind of chuckled. He said, "I'm a gamer," and uh, he's like number one. He's currently number two in the world in this particular game, and he, um, which I had seen it before, but they, he videos himself, you know, playing the game. I guess what's it called? Self, whatever the whatever it is, whatever the term he used, and. Um, He does it on Twitch and he does it on YouTube and he has these ads and followers or whatever. (laughs) And he told me how much money he makes a month doing that. And um, I was astounded. Like I was thinking maybe that's what I need to do. (laughs) And and so I said, well, how often do you, I didn't know anything about this. And um, he posts, you know, like one one video a day, uh, usually between 30, 30, maybe 40 minutes. But so there's the, you know, there's the gaming part of it, right. but it's like a lot of things that we've seen. There's actually now in that technology, there's the incentive to do more and to stay on, yeah. right? I could potentially make money. Absolutely. And so th- that's another, I think, temptation that we have to be careful of because your child, your son, your daughter may say, hey, but dad, I, I made $500 <laughs> last month, yeah. you know, playing this game. Yeah, so we love for our children to go out and cut lawns or make money and be entrepreneurs. But again, there's the balance, right? It's a, it's just a, it's a very interesting world. I appreciate what you said, that it's not all right or wrong. You know, as, as churches and pastors, I say to them, I have pastor friends of mine who still say social media is of the devil and our church will never be on Facebook or whatever. Um, you know, just about nowadays, I mean, we almost have to be on social media. Absolutely. Is it an getting, idol, and how do we use it? How do we use it, and can we use it for God and for good? Yeah. And so that's exactly right. What about, um, you alluded to it a moment ago, but let's talk about, and we've, we've addressed it a little bit on a previous podcast, but let's talk about pornography yeah. and, and our, our teens and technology. Yeah, it's, I mean, technology is an issue, but, but even more so, I mean, amongst teenagers, it is the issue. 
that more than 90%, the the stat is 90%, 90% of (coughs) teens are encouraging or okay with porn. Wow. And so you think of beyond that, that more than 50% are first experienced or have seen it uh, before they're 13. Mm -hmm. You look at how it's escalated now. It's not just a male issue, that it's a female issue. And it is almost close to 50-50 now. Which is so interesting. And so it is is the issue. And so as parents, as pastors, as grandparents, as influencers, we need to assume and know that for your your son your daughter it is an issue it it is something that they are facing or have facing and so and so what we as a church and what we must do is talk about it we must talk about it we must wage war against it uh to equip them i think one of the stats that i saw a couple years ago where maybe the average age of when a a boy or a girl is introduced to pornography was around 13. now the average is like eight years old and because you know in my generation many years ago you basically had to have a an, a friend whose dad you know would get a, a magazine mm-hmm. and they would sneak it out of the house and we get to look at a magazine now with that device it's being sent to you Absolutely. it's free and it's there and it's and you're being bombarded by it and you can't hardly avoid it and so uh, i would also just s- make this statement I- i'm a, i'm now addressing young couples yeah that um, they're, they're, they're newlyweds, they're, they've been married a few years, and they come into my office and they have some issues because him, her, both exposed to pornography through te- technology, very young age, and how that even today is affecting their Christian walk and affecting their marriage. And so we cannot take lightly the l- long lasting effects of, of this pornography. Yeah. So as many listeners, they see technology, they click on this video. Mm-hmm. And initially what we think is we think how we need as moms and dads, how we need to, to provide safety, how we need to protect our children. And so, so the two, two of the ways we perfect, the initial way that we think when we think of technology is protecting against all the creepers online mm-hmm. of all the apps and all the, all the websites and all different <coughs> things and chat rooms that are trying to talk to, to our our children of any age, we need to protect against that. So we need to protect against them physically, but we also need to protect their soul. Yeah. And so, so you said wage war. I, I've told I told many parents this is that whatever's necessary, right? Whatever's necessary. And so we can talk practically a few things what that looks like. But if you remove and go the extreme and take every technology away phone, computer, laptop, everything, and they hate you for a season, and they will. <laughs> if they hate you for a season, it's worth it if it saves their future marriage. Right, exactly. It's That's worth good. it if it saves them the way they view women um, in, in the future. So I, I think there are some practical things that you can do. Without uh, having to necessarily go to the extreme of taking absolutely. everything away, right? I, th- I think there's no reason there should be technology in the room. Yep. As we think, and, and we're you mean like in their bedroom. In their bedroom. Yep. I think as we think through Maverick, and as he gets older, some different things that that we that we will do is is that there, there's no technology in, in their room, phone, computer, iPad. Uh, I, I think we want to encourage them to have a mentor, to have someone that they can talk mm-hmm. to, and then real accountability. This isn't just a teen issue. This is this is an issue all the way up. Right. Um, my age, your age, all, yes, all right. across, and so they're saying one out of what one out of four men absolutely addicted to pornography, addicted, not viewing, yeah, addicted, addicted. So, and yeah, so, an issue. so I think it's important that when we talk about it, that what real accountability looks like, not oh man, hey, do better next time, you, you, we'll get through it. No, hey, you have another time, or I'm gonna go talk to your wife. Yeah, you have another time, I'm gonna go talk to your mom. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, whatever that is, I think real accountability. That's good. And then I, I don't think we think through when we think of technology, we think of pornography, prayer and fasting. 
God, remove this from me. That, mm-hmm. that there is nothing more I desire than you. And so, so prayer and fasting. And I think that we're going to pray and fast for our kids. And it may be at a certain time, especially if you're a teenager and they are a Christian, they're a believer, and they're caught or they're convicted mm-hmm. by it, is that, look, let's pray and fast together, Yeah. right? Uh, I think even as adults, you know, there's been di- different times in my life uh, that I've just needed to fast from technology, mm-hmm. you know, a few days because I feel like, hey, this is this is lording over me or I'm allowing this technology or this notification to, you know, uh, get more attention than it should. And yeah. so I think there are some some truths there. Let, let's let's conclude the podcast by giving our listeners some principles one of the things that i try to share when things are not always black and white are not easy easy clear answers are principles so let's let's give some basic principles of um, of your kid your child and technology let me also give a bit of explanation or clarification for our listeners there twice today you've mentioned maverick maverick is uh, my grandson your son Mm -hmm. who's four years old and uh and and i i love the fact that you and abigail are thinking through Mm -hmm. you know hey we know uh what in the world 10 years from now will technology be like ai and all of those kinds of things but let's begin thinking now does he have a pad to play games with to learn with and if he does what's what's the time that we allow that so i think it's so important you don't need to wait till they're 12 13 14 years old I think as, as soon as you can be thinking about what are the principles, what are the guidelines um, that we're going to have in our household. And, and I think, let me just, before you start listing some of the principles, I think what's good for the kid is, is good for the parent. Mm-hmm. So if we're going to say at dinner time, all phones are on the, are off limits, you know, yeah. let's say that when everybody gets home, we're going to have dinner together and we can all check our phones once an hour, right? Just to check them. But, you know, let's, let's, let's make sure, because what we don't want is mom and dad preaching to the kid yeah. and yet they're over there buried in their iPad or their phone, right? So right. Let, let's make sure that we're also being good examples as parents. So, but let's let some Let's list some principles that may can help our right. listeners. So I think there's four that I think through, and and these aren't necessarily all mine or all yours, but these are these are backed by by sociologists and, and different mm-hmm. background and resources. Um, there's a resource called the Anxious Generation. I'd encourage you to yep. read that if you'd be interested in that. But that could, some of this comes from that. But the first thing is is they say no smart for, no smartphones before high school. Mm. And so I, I think this is different, different by person, different by age and, and different thoughts. But the, the thought is no smartphones before high school. And so we hear that we're like, well, there's no way. Well, there is ways that you can you can limit the apps. You can have no Internet browser access. And so the important thing is, is that no, they, they do not have instant access um, to Internet. And so no smartphones before high school. Yeah, I was thinking it was either you or your brother in junior high. Um, you know, I forgot it was sports or whatever the situation was, is that um, it was probably your brother begging for a phone. Mm-hmm. And um, and so we gave him a phone, but, but he really, it's when it was school was over, to call us. Mm-hmm. There was only particular times Absolutely. or reasons they would use it. Again, <clears throat> smartphones coming by a little bit, little bit later, but... The uh, I think that's I think that's good counsel. Every situation is different, yeah. and and what their child may need at that particular time. But I think that's a very good general guideline principle. Right. Okay. So we're not saying don't communicate. Yeah. We're not right. saying don't be able to text or it's call your child. It's the access to the web Absolutely. and all those apps. Right. Yeah. Okay. So the second is is that no social media before sixteen, is that the most vulnerable state of a teenager let their brain, let them fully socially develop uh, before they are bombarded with social media and what culture and society is going to tell them and before their brain triggers every light they see. Yeah, there's a dopamine hit every time they see there's a like. So they're constantly checking how many views did I get? How many likes did I get? And then and then there's that, you know, mean girl, mean bully guy making those negative comments and how that affects their mindset. And again, they're they're just physically they may not be mature enough to to handle that. Right. And so we see that depression. We see that threatening of suicide. You know, all of those things that we want to try to avoid our children have to deal with. That's a good principle. I like that. Right. The third is they say no uh, phone free schools. Yeah. 
that it is the it is the only time that you can free up attention for them to focus on their peers, to focus on their teachers, building real relationship mm-hmm. with friends in between classes and and while they're studying, having real interaction, problem solving yeah. with their teachers is that they, they recommend phone free schools. So we see that a, a lot of different school districts across our nation are adopting that. Uh, in our own city here in Mobile, I think our Mobile County Public School System just adopted that mm-hmm. this year. I think there's like a bag drop or something. I think there's some guidelines and rules and those kinds of things. But, you know, personally, I, I, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. While they're there, you know, maybe they need to text or call their parent or somebody before school, certainly right after school, but during those school hours, let the focus be on academics. Mm-hmm. Let the focus be on building those relationships, you know, playing those sports, building those teams. You know, I think that's actually probably pretty good counsel if that can, if that can happen, if that, if that can work. Yeah. And then, and then one of the fourth is that far more of every age, far more unsupervised play for, for the child. So mm-hmm. that's outside, that's, that's running around, that's playing, that's w- whatever age that is, getting involved in sports, whatever is, let them have unsupervised playtime where him and a friend get in an argument and they've got to figure it out. Yeah, they have to work um, it out. And, and whatever that is, figuring out problem solving, anxiety, developing these things, learning, um, learning how, how, to, how, to, how, to, how to work, how to self-govern. And just those, uh, the social maturity, um, how to make friends, how to deal with broken relationships and all those kinds of dynamics. That's very good. Uh, let's, let's just conclude by saying this, not because we're pastors, but because we absolutely believe this. The most important thing that we want is for our, our son, our daughter, to have a personal relationship with Christ. Absolutely. So, so above their baseball team, their dance team, above even if they're making $500 a month playing, you know, a video game, mm-hmm. Fortnite, whatever it may be, is that above all of that, their personal relationship with Christ? Because we can only, as parents, we only have a, especially once they get into school, especially yeah. you start reaching those preteen years and teen years, our, our number of hours per day, we're down to just a couple of hours a day versus uh, the technology and their school and all of that. So the little bit of influence we have, it needs to be focused on their relationship with Christ so that when we're not around, mm-hmm. there is the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And, uh, and, and hopefully they have other Christian friends mm-hmm. that will also influence them. Right. But ultimately, we want them to hear from God. So we, we're constantly, as parents, going to say, that's wrong, that's bad, don't do that. Mm-hmm. But man... It's so much easier if they're walking with the Lord and his spirit speaks to their spirit yeah. about, uh, about some changes that they need to make. Absolutely. If That's they cool. want to find it, they'll find it. Whether yeah. it's pornography, mm-hmm. whether it's someone chatting online, yeah. whether it's premarital sex, whatever, whatever yeah. it is that they want, they can find it. Yeah. So ultimately, our first priority is pushing their relationship with the Lord. And they're in the love for the word and the love for the church and, and having brothers and sisters to come alongside them and help them so that the spirit dwells in them mm-hmm. so that they can be sensitive when temptation arises. Not if it's yeah. the issue. Yeah. So may we push our children to be sensitive and strong in their faith. That's good. So they can say no. That's good. Well, we have had so many folks message us to deal a little bit more with this topic. So I think, uh, I think it's been very helpful. I think great guidelines, great principles cannot be ignored. Why don't we take a moment and why don't you lead us? Let's pray for those moms and dads and even grandparents mm-hmm. that maybe uh, are, are raising grandchildren in this culture of technology. Let's just take a moment. Let's just pray for yeah. them. Lord, we pray for wisdom. And Lord, we pray for guidance as, as we watch over our sons, our daughters, our grandchildren. Because, Lord, we, we want nothing more for them to grow and love you and have a relationship with you. So, Lord, I pray that you give us wisdom, you give us guidance. Lord, I pray that you give us boldness and courage to take the necessary steps, to, to give us boldness and courage to, to make them go to camp. You give mm-hmm. us boldness and courage to push them to church, to remove the phones, to remove the distractions. So, Lord, I pray that we push to you focusing on you. And Lord, I pray that we set the example that we need to set 
as we guide and direct our children. Lord, we love you. We're mm-hmm. thankful for you, thankful for your grace, because we need it in this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for listening to the podcast today. If you have a question, you have a topic that you would like for us to address, we would love to do that. Just drop us a message, and as soon as we can, we will tackle that topic.